Hello and welcome to the Junior Late Model Esports Series informative tutorial presented by Racecraft One Motorsports Training. I am your instructor, Kelly Jones, Chief Instructor with Racecraft One. Today we're going to cover a number of topics uh, beginning with iRacing. We'll talk about iRacing content and how to quickly update just the content required for your upcoming session. We'll talk about audio, video, and display settings, how to configure, set, and restore them. We'll cover the spotter settings and how to password protect your account. We'll also talk about spotter connection for iRacing events. Along with that, we'll cover how to watch, ghost, or crew uh, for an iRacer. We'll talk about iRacing radio channels for spotting and for race administration. How to access and view detailed race results of every individual lap time for every participant in a given session. We'll cover iRacing replays and clips, how to save, name, and review them as valuable tools for driver development. Next, we'll give a quick overview of how to save race telemetry data and we'll introduce data analysis tools. We'll talk about team speak communication setup, how to connect, and how to set your audio playback and capture settings. And lastly, we'll talk about the racer's mindset and how to keep cool and race cleanly under pressure. You will know that an update has been released by seeing updates required on the iRacing homepage right here where it says updates required with the red uh, circular uh, download button. Now these updates can be small or they can be quite large. If it is quite large and if you're in a hurry to run or join an event you may not want to download all of the updated cars and tracks and you may want only the car and track uh, that you're going to use right then. One way to select this is rather than clicking on updates required uh, go over here to the orange test button clicking on test and select only the car and the track that you need to run uh, for that at that moment. When you do that, you'll have a Get Required Updates button that you can then click on. By clicking on Select Required, then only the car and track content that you need for that session will be downloaded, thereby making it a much quicker download. So, then go here to click on Download, and your download will begin. iRacing will ask your permission to begin the download. Click on yes to confirm and then you can see we have a smaller download that only will take us just over one minute to get the content downloaded from the internet. Once that download is complete then you'll be able to run just that car on that track for your upcoming session this gives you the option of downloading the entire update for all of the cars and tracks or just select cars and tracks at a later time. Refresh the page by clicking here on reload. Now the indicator comes up with the green test car on track where we know we have the content the required car and track downloaded. You can see now the updates available has changed from a red color to a yellow color, indicating that yes, there are still updates available, but not ones that are required for our upcoming session. Next, we're going to talk about your graphic settings for iRacing. So, below the orange test button, click on settings, and what we want to do is run the graphics configurator. So, you click on launch and uh, and you'll have the Auto Config Graphics Options menu uh, come up. In here, it'll give you the choice of choosing your proper display and graphics uh, processor. 
if you have more than one display. And once you have that selected, click on Auto Configure, and then a Select a Graphics Mode menu window will pop up. Here, in this window, you'll have a choice to set your resolution to match the, your display screen of your computer. Uh, you'll have everything up to the maximum available resolution uh, here on my screen. I'm running a 2K monitor, which is 2560 by 1440, meaning that my monitor can display 2560 pixels wide by 1440 pixels tall. And we can also select lesser settings if we wanted to run iRacing in a smaller window and not the full screen. So in this case we want to run full screen so we'll come down here and click on the highest setting 2560 by 1440. If you want to run iRacing in a window you can click on run in a window the checkbox. You can run with a window border or run it borderless. In this case, we'll run without the window. We'll run it in the full screen. And once we've had, a, once we've got our desired, and once we have our desired settings, then we click on finish. With my graphics set the way I'd like them, next we'll go ahead and test our car on the track. So we'll click here, and we'll wait for iRacing to load the car and as you can see the bullring at Las Vegas is loading with the Chevy Monte Carlo SS late model. Next we'll talk about the audio settings for iRacing. First you want to check your the first thing you want to do is check your default audio settings and you do that by going down to the taskbar down by the clock here and the speaker symbol right click on the speaker symbol to bring up a menu click on open sound settings. This will bring up uh, the settings page for your sound options. For your output, the sound output, you want to choose your output device. You can click on the drop down arrow and it'll get, it will give you a list of different output devices that are available to you. You can see the first thing on my list is my here we have a list of the sound output devices available on this simulator. The first choice in the list is the Realtek HD Audio second output, which corresponds with, on my computer, the, my headphones. And for today, I'm going to use the headset, the headset audio sound output, which is uh, here, the Realtek Audio second output. Next we'll look at the sound input and what we have selected here is the Microtech Realtek High Definition Audio. It's the only microphone input that's active on this computer and as you can see it's the only choice. Also note that as I'm talking into the microphone to make this recording you can see that the sound indication for the microphone is showing proper activity. So what we have set now is within the Windows operating system the sound output device we have chosen is the second output corresponding with my headset and for the input we have chosen the Realtek microphone which is the microphone that I'm using and we can see that it is active by the bar here. So these are the default choices now in any other software that we will use on our simulator. I'll close this window out and then in iRacing I'll, we'll click on options and we'll come down to sound and here's where we choose which devices we want iRacing to use for our sound output and sound capture. Here we have system default which is selected uh, for the simulation which means that the car and track sounds will be output through the default which we set earlier as the headset. If we click on the drop down arrow it gives us the choice of setting the simulation output to uh, separately those other uh, output devices that, are that we have listed that correspond to what was shown in the Windows sound settings. We're going to leave it here to system default and by system default since we've already set the second audio output uh, in the Windows setting then that's what we know that iRacing will use for the system default.
if you have a surround sound uh, audio system you can check here and then the sound output for iRacing will be in surround audio for format here we have slide bars we can adjust the individual levels of each of the types of sounds if you want to enable voice chat within iRacing where you can hear and speak to the other drivers that are in a group event then we'll have this checkbox uh, selected you can have uh, the audio disabled while driving and you can also click here to have it keep it muted or to select whether it's muted or not again for voice chat we have our choices again to set the the playback device the output the sound output device and here second audio output for my headset and we have also the microphone proper microphone setting here this is also where we program a push to talk button so if I wanted to uh, use a button on my keyboard or your steering wheel then you go to push to talk you click on it and it would ask you to choose a control for voice pu chat push to talk in this case on my keypad I'm going to press the I'm going to press keypad 0 and you can see once I pressed it then it's assigned you can also assign control buttons or keys on your keyboard to to increase the volume to set it louder to decrease it quieter and this is for the voice chat remember you can mute it set that to a, a button you can mute the particular driver you can also select your next radio channel and your previous radio channel and radio channels we'll discuss later on in this video this is also the place where you can check the checkbox to enable the spotter and adjust the individual uh, uh, controls for which sound device your spotter will come over and also your volume and other controls for the spotter once you have your settings selected then click on done so to review we've set in Windows operating system our default devices for sound output and sound input and then in iRacing we set the sound devices uh, for the output and input to correspond with the system default settings there you next we will cover how to password protect your spotter settings this is very useful to prevent unwanted intruders on your spotter channel. Once again, from the members homepage below the orange test button, we'll click on settings and we'll come down here to crew spotter settings. You can see here that I have the crew spotter settings turned on. You can turn the spotter settings off if you like by clicking and holding and dragging it to off and when you want to turn spotter settings on for a spotter to join you can turn it on <coughs> note below that you have a number of different crew spotter privacy settings if the green dot next to anyone can be my spotter is lit then anyone can come into your session and see that your spotter settings are available and they can join or you can set it to only friends can be your crew or spotter that way only those iRacing members listed as your friends can join as your spotter or you can set require a password for your spotter and you can type in your desired password here and you would save it in order to save that as the password and then share that password with those who you would like to act as your spotter you can see here that you can allow only friends with the password to join as a spotter or you can set anyone who has the password to join as your spotter once you have your spotter settings set then you can uh, close this menu and uh, come back to the iRacing member homepage. Now we're going to discuss iRacing radio channels for spotting and the spotting procedures. First, for your if you want to join as a 
Next we'll cover how to have your spotter join you for the Junior Late Model Esports Series League event. From the menu selection, click on Find Official Races, and in the drop-down menu, we have Watch, Ghost, Crew, and Spot. From there, you can come over and down to League Races, and then it will pull up a series of League Races that are currently running. Here, if it was during the time of the Junior Late Model Esports Series race on Thursdays, you would see that listed as a choice. In this case, we're going to use, uh, as an example, the Indian Sim Racing League. And we'll come over here. You can see that there's a green binoculars there that shows that, hey, it's ready to join. You can join as, your spotter can join just as to watch now, if you just wanted to watch a race, or if you just wanted to watch an ongoing race. Or you can actually join as a spotter for those drivers who have the headphones uh, uh, set there. Because you've previously assigned a password to your spotter settings, then under your name, just as we see here for Sohil Shah, you would have a padlock showing that you would require a password in order to spot for that driver. In this case, I'm going to uh, we're going to just jump in and join Raymond Samerville and by clicking on his headset. And then iRacing will proceed to your driver's briefing, and then you'd be able to uh, click on join session uh, once the uh, please wait for session uh, period has passed. Now you can see here it says spot, meaning you're ready to spot. You can your spotter will click here, and then iRacing would begin loading the car and track content and joining that session. Next we're going to talk about iRacing radio channels and how to add a radio channel corresponding with your own car number. Here you can see I'm car number one and we can verify that by clicking on entries and you can see number one next to my name here. Uh, so if we wanted to add a radio channel for car number one then we could do so by coming down to the chat channel here typing in at add space and then I'll type in the number zero one for my car number when we do that in the upper right corner you can see that now we are we are listening and transmitting on the channel that we just created channel zero one this is a great way to create a discrete channel for you and your spotter and so that race control can address you as an individual driver on your channel. From inside the car, if you call up the radio, uh, uh, the radio black box, then you can see that we can listen on all teams. We're listening to at drivers, at team, the club channel, the admin channel, the race control channel, your private channel, a private channel, and also a channel corresponding with your car number. Right now, we've got in green at drivers under transmitter that's what we're selected to transmit but let's but we would want to change that now to our own discrete channel uh, zero one so now you can see for the scanner we're listening to all of these channels on the on the left side of the black box on the right side we're transmitting on our personal channel that we created we would have our spotter join at channel 01 so that we have our discrete spotter and race control can now talk to us individually both to my spotter and myself. Here's a reminder for every driver on how to capture the telemetry data in your session. So the key combination is the alt key and the letter L. The ALT or ALT key is located on either side of your spacebar. To activate your telemetry, you would type in ALT L key combination 
alt meaning alt that key is on the left and right side of your spacebar combined with the letter l so to activate telemetry you would press and hold your alt key and tap your letter l and when i do so you'll see on the screen that in the upper right corner you see telemetry that shows up just below the quit and the channel indication for your radio that telemetry is active you can even activate your telemetry while you are in car to do so while you're in car it's the same key combination press and hold the alt key and type the letter L and you can see down here lower in the lower left corner lower left corner of your screen uh, above the driver control input indicator there you type letter alt L key combination and now you see telemetry is active this way if you're on track and you remember at that time to activate your telemetry you can have a notification while you're in car uh, uh, that you have activated your telemetry there you can leave the telemetry on and it will stay on for the entire time that you are in that session if you exit the car or exit uh, pardon me if you exit the session if you leave that session leave that track then enter another track you'll need to reactivate your telemetry with an alt L key combination next I'll go over some useful items and tips and tricks you can use uh, during a session one of the first things that we work on is in the garage okay you can see uh, uh, your garage settings these are settings for your tires as far as your pressure settings here you can also set your stagger for this particular car both front and rear and down below if we click on the chassis tab this gives us the adjustments we can make for the suspension and other parameters and then on the notes tab you can type notes uh, you can see here there's some notes on how this setup was created oftentimes uh, other drivers will share a setup and if you click on shared setups in here you'll have a list of the different setups that were shared by other drivers with the file name and you can select one and click on open and then you will load that setup onto your car during our hosted instructional sessions this is where the instructor will share with you the race setup that will be used on the Thursday when you if you have your own setups you click on my setups and you can see a collection of setups uh, that you have already saved and are kept uh, for you to use and and load onto your car in this case if I wanted to join or load the junior late model eSports series bullring race setup I would click on that it comes up with the file name there I would click on open and then it would show up here at the top that yes my current car setup is identical to the junior late model eSports series bullring race setup if I want to get an iRacing default setup I can click on iRacing setups here and you have baseline uh, baseline setup plus list for other iRacing default setups for various tracks uh, that uh, uh, that this car the late model would run on if I have a setup and I want to change the name of it I can click on save as and I can come down here and edit the name and let's say let's say this was the best setup that I had so far I could give it a name a corresponding name and call it best bullring race setup if I click on save and then if I go back to my setups you'll see up here that now I have that setup saved and I could come back and load it at any time um, uh, during this session or any future sessions let's say I wanted to share my setup with other drivers then I will click on share and you can share with share the current setup with everyone or with just your club or just your team if I wanted to export 
the setup. So once I have the setup loaded, my desired setup loaded, I'll click on done and that brings me back to this page. Let's go through some other things that are found on the options page. Clicking on options, it'll bring us to uh, the options page here and this is where we can check a few things like uh, we can assign our steering, we can calibrate our pedals and also uh, calibrate our gearbox. We'll talk a few things. Uh, we'll talk about a few things, as, such as the graphics settings. Clicking on options and coming down to graphics, here we can manually set parameters for how many screens we have and also the field of view. But let's say you want to adjust w your mirrors and what displays in your mirrors. By clicking on the advanced tab here, it gives us a drop down menu of many things like detail settings. But the main thing we want to focus on is today is the right hand column here. So if you want to show your driver's arms, you can do that. You can show the steering wheel only, or if you wanted to hide the steering wheel, uh, you, can, you can select that as well. I'll go back to show steering wheel, which is how, how, I, like, how I like to uh, uh, run my settings. Uh, if you want to turn on your cockpit mirrors, you can click the checkbox for your cockpit mirrors. Okay, you can even set higher details in the mirrors if you want headlights displayed as well. So the, this, these are two things that, that are most commonly uh, uh, selected um, in the in the graphic setting is turning on the cockpit mirrors. If I click on done and then now if I click on go out on track you can see that I have here the cockpit mirror is and the, and also the side view mirror, the center view, the center mirror and the side view mirror along with the virtual mirror up at the top. I'll escape back out to out of the car. I'll come back here to options and I'll come down to replay. The replay is very valuable as a learning tool for every driver. Uh, and so you want to set iRacing up to save your replay, to give you the option to save the replay once you quit out of a session. So you would want to have both of these checkboxes, enable replay spooling and ask to save replay on quit. You want to make sure that both of those are checked. You can also save the audio settings, uh, your radio channels, all the chatter that comes over the radio, you can save that as part of your replay or you can save everything but the custom radio channels. You can also save all but your team and custom channels or save no chat. Here I'll select save all radio channels to the replay. Just like in your overall graphics settings, you can choose the level of, level of detail for your replay settings. Uh, one thing that you may find useful is checking on the cockpit mirrors so that you have your cockpit mirrors displayed in the replay. So having covered the replay, next we'll talk about setting your controls. You, over here by clicking on the controls tab, you can assign to all the things that are not grayed out, uh, customized controls for buttons on your steering wheel, on your button panel if you happen to have a button box, or con uh, on your keyboard. So you can click on, you can select any one of the uh, controls listed that are not grayed out and assign a function to them. So just for example, here for lap timing on the black box, if I want to call it the lap timing black box, right now it's set to F1, the F1 key. If I, if I clicked and then click, if I wanted to uh, assign it to something different, then I would click on that function and then assign it to, uh, uh, here I assigned it to keypad 5. I'm going to change it back to F1. So I clicked on it and it says choose a control to select the lap timing black box and then I'll press the F1 key and now it's returned to the F1 key. That way whenever I'm in car on the track and I want to bring up that black box, if the lap time black box over here, lower right corner, if I click on F1 then it brings up the lap timing black box. Now I'll show you how to save and name your replay for review later on. 
The replay is a very valuable training tool for you as a driver. You can look at every detail of your driving and review the things you did well and the things you did not so well so, and also you can view all the other drivers involved in the session as well. In order to save the replay when you quit out of a session here remember that well before we click, click on quit remember that here under options and replay since we already we check the box and then we'll replay spooling and ask to save replay on quit then that is what will allow us to save the replay so when we click on when we click on quit the confirmation comes up you click on yes and now it gives you the option of saving the replay and the file name iRacing will give you will place a file name in here uh, uh, for you but it may not be as descriptive as you, as you want. It may mean it may come up as subsession with a number there, or it may come up with a date and timestamp. Here, I'm going to show you how to save the replay to a name that makes sense to you. So I'm going to call it test underscore bullring. And once I've done that, I'll click on save. If I did not want to save the replay, I would just simply click on the X here to exit. But in this case, we want to save the replay, so I'm going to click on Save here at the lower right corner, and it says Replay is Saved. I click on OK, and then it, it exits the session. Next, I'll click on Continue to return to the Members home page. Remember that once you've left a hosted or league session, and if you want to be free to join a different session, you must first withdraw from the session that you just left. So in this case, you would click here on Withdraw, confirm it by clicking on Withdraw Now, and then that will free you up to join any other online session. If you find that you're trying to join an online session and it says that you are currently logged into an existing session, then you can come back to the member's home page and pull up that menu to withdraw now uh, and to free you up to join a different session. Next, we're going to cover how to look at the detailed lap times and results from the Junior Late Model Esports Series uh, Racing League. So here I'm going to come down to League Directory. Click on Lead Directory. Uh, it'll show at the top the leagues that uh, that that the driver is currently a member of. And here you see Junior Late Model Esports as the second line. Uh, I'll click on View. And in the calendar, you can see a trophy showing the results of, uh, of clicking on review brings up uh, the calendar and list of uh, officials and, and members of the Junior Late Model Esports League. Here on the calendar, you have a trophy on the dates showing, uh, indicating the dates that the league has already run. So let's take a look at uh, April 9th. If we click on uh, race seasons up top, we look at all, click on all races, and here we can see April 9th, we have the Five Flag Speedway, uh, with uh, 15 minutes of practice, uh, a two lap qualifier, and a 100 lap race. Let's click on the R to view the results. What comes up next is a chart of the results for each individual session. 
uh, we can see the different information with respect to um, that race session, um, the rules that were set for that, and a summary of the race as far as laps completed, how many cautions, how many caution laps, and how many lead changes, etc. We can scroll down and you can see in the feature race we have the uh, uh, the results listed by feature and all the data uh, available um, for the feature race. Clicking over here and holding on the scroll bar, we can come down and look at the warm-up results, the results of the consolation, which was our last chance qualifier, the results of Heat 2, and the results of Heat 1. Let's go back to the, the feature race. And if you want to look at the lap times for any individual driver, you can come over to, let's say for, let's look at Austin Edwards. If we went to laps here and we click on laps, then what comes up is a printout of every lap time of Austin Edwards in the heat race. I'm sorry, in the feature race. You can do this for any driver at any session. Take a look at their lap. Take a look at the lap times, uh, including your own lap times. So this is a valuable resource to look at uh, uh, to analyze the, a race that you have taken part in, or any other race that you have access to as a league member. You can even output this information in comma separated values if you wanted to build your own spreadsheet out of out of the information here. Okay, we'll exit out of here. Once again, to show where that came up, you would go to your league directory. Click on view your desired league. You see the dates here on the calendar for races that were that have been run there. Come over here to uh, uh, all races that count towards the championship. You click on that. That shows how many races have the races that have been run in that series. Look at April 9th, and you click on the red R, not the X, okay, but the red R to view those results. And that's what puts out the chart of information for all of the sessions uh, in that league race. Next, we'll talk about uh, looking at the replay, not just the data uh, and the results on the spreadsheet, but actually calling up the replay. So in the menu system here, we come to results and stats, click on my replays, and then that will bring up a selection of replays uh, sorted by tabs. Here the online replay tab is in bold. That's the one that's active. Uh, if we click on testing replays, this is a list of replays that you've done uh, 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 not online with other drivers but by doing a, uh, a solo test session. We're interested in online replays, so we'll click on online replays. It'll load up the latest ones that we have that we have saved. You can uh, sort by different criteria here at the top, but in this case, we've got all our races listed. And let's look at the round two for a junior late model esports series. You can see the creation date, the label at the top of the column, um, the series, which week, uh, the car, the track, the file name, the author, and other uh, information about that race. So let's come on down to the Junior Late Model Esports Series Round 2. That's the name that I gave it when I, uh, when I saved that replay. And we'll click on the green arrow to load that session. So if I come over here to the lower left, I click on Entries. Then I have a full list of all the drivers who were entered into the event. I click on the top of the column. I can sort by sort by that uh, column label. So if I click on uh, number, then I can sort by car number. Here it's low to high. Click again, and we sort by car number, high to low. We can also sort alphabetically by the driver's name, um, low to high and high to low. 
Uh, today, uh, here we've I've selected Colby Sokol. If we want to change to uh, Bryson Ruff, we double click on Bryson Ruff, and it will come up uh, with uh, uh, the camera will be, will be watching him. Let's switch back to Colby Sokol by double clicking. And now I'm going to shrink the entries menu um, uh, to take it out of the uh, uh, so it's not blocking the view. I'll return here to the replay controls. Right now I've got the replay paused and you can see uh, the number 24 red and white car, that being Colby so called. Here you can see the parameters. Once again, car number 24, he's currently in position number 20. His speed at this moment is 92 miles per hour. The last lap that he drove, he turned to 17.046. Here in the replay, you can see we're watching his lap 21. If I wanted to switch uh, advance to the next lap, we could click on the right arrow to advance to lap 22. And when you do so, it advances to the car just as it's crossing the start finish line to begin the next lap. Uh, right here, it's, it's ending lap 21. If I press play, then immediately you see cross the start finish line, and now the lap. Uh, number has advanced to lap number 22. Another very useful feature of iRacing uh, is the different camera views which we can click uh, and select here. If I click on the up arrow it gives me a full menu of different camera views. We can switch from blimp to chopper mode to uh, to chase where we're watching uh, the chase view of the car. We can click to far chase uh, and also rear chase where we're looking from the front uh, rearward uh, at the car. I'm going to click on play and we'll watch as Colby drives a few laps here and we'll go through and look at the different camera views. There's the blimp view, there's the chopper view, you can switch to a pit lane view which would just show a pit lane exit. Let's come back to a view that, uh, let's go to cockpit view to see Colby's view from inside his cockpit. This is very useful for analyzing both your own driving and other drivers where you can see uh, you, can, you can see where the speed is increasing and decreasing. You can also check the tack needle uh, to see when the revs are coming up to give an indication of when someone is, is opening the throttle. Okay. Since this replay captures uh, the practice, two heat races, the last chance qualifier and the feature there's a lot of uh, it, it's a pretty long replay let's say we want to scroll ahead uh, from practice into say uh, qualifying well if we click on the click on this button that shows a wrench with the hammer click on that and then we get a timeline of the entire replay so we can take this scroll bar uh, at the top here and we can advance it to uh, uh, anywhere that we'd like in, this, in any of the sessions. So let's advance it to heat one. It shows a minute 55 seconds into heat one. And I'll uh, click resume play and I'll go ahead and minimize, minimize that there. Next we'll come over to entries. Uh, I'm sorry, click over on results. We'll click on heat one. This shows the results of heat one. And let's say we're going to look at Grant Thompson uh, right now. So I double click on Grant Thompson. I'll minimize the results uh, key there. And now we can look at, uh, uh, we can monitor this driver uh, from the cockpit view. Let's say we want to look at all the laps that, that Grant drove uh, and from there select uh, one particular lap. Let's say we want to look at Grant's lap number 13. So the way we would do that is in, uh, we'd advance this to the heat that we're observing uh, and now we'll come down here to lap 13 for heat one for this driver. If you double click on that on, on heat one, then it advances you to, as you can see, the end of lap 12 and the beginning of lap 13. I'm going to switch now to the far chase camera view and we can see the driver's car as he's approaching start finish and once we click on play, we see that the lap number has advanced to lap 13. In this case, in this way, we can look at any lap of any driver in this session, and we can really pick apart uh, the line that they drove and their driving technique. It's also an excellent tool for looking at uh, your own uh, uh, replay and your own driving techniques, so that to help you improve as well. So let's watch. Uh, let's watch this lap 13. 
one way to open up the view and to take the menus away is to press the space bar. You see I'll press the space bar, the menu goes away and now I've got the wide open view as, as Grant is exiting turn 4. I'll bring the menu up, back up here and then I'll go ahead and pause it. Okay, looks like we got some action going on up, uh, up ahead of Grant. Let's take a look at what Grant's view uh, looks like, what he sees in the cockpit. And you can see um, this is what the driver's point of this is from the driver's point of view within the cockpit. I'm going to come back out to the far chase view. Okay, and now we're going to skip ahead. We're going to select up ahead. Uh, let's say this this car right here. So the way to do that is we can come down here to the driver uh, display. We'll click on the right arrow here to move up the order and now we're watching the view from car number 22. Let's back it up a bit. You can see you can back it up frame by frame by clicking on the frame uh, uh, button here and let's see what happened right at initial contact uh, 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 what happened between car number 22 and car number 23. I'm gonna click on slow motion to play at 1 8th speed and you can see there's a bit of a tap. Car 3 gets wide and both cars go high. Now let's see how this car here avoided the incident. So let's come back here to the driver control. We'll come back to where we're watching now. Uh, 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 car number 79 and then we'll come in to watch the cockpit view and see how this event unfolded for this driver. I'm going to press rewind to back it up. I'll pause it here and then we'll press play and play it through. And now you see how that driver was able to get past that incident. And if we wanted to, we can come out to the the blimp view, okay? And that gives us a pretty uh, a view from from up from on high. Let's back it up a bit. Once again, to that initial contact, okay. Maybe from the blimp view, it's a bit crowded. So I'm going to show you another trick. If you press Control F12 key combination, that brings up your camera controls. And here I'm going to take the field of view, and I'm going to take click on this this slider here, and I'm going to zoom it out. All right, so now we've zoomed out so that we can see uh, a, a wider uh, field of view. And now I'm going to press play. Uh, I'm going to play, actually press half speed to see how it developed from on high. I'm going to press Control F12 to take away that menu system so that it's no longer in the way. And we see how that incident developed on lap 14 for this driver. You can see there's more contact there. So this is a very useful tool for analyzing not only your own driver, but any other driver as well. Uh, you can pull up the list of laps, double click on that lap, and then look at that specific lap number. And you can come back and look at uh, uh, the different, your chosen camera view to pick that, uh, that, that video apart and dig out all the useful information uh, that you may need. So, let's say we want to just edit a, a, a single clip, maybe a clip of that contact. So, uh, let's step ahead to car number 22, and we'll play to the point of where that contact occurred. So let's say we want to pause it here. 
Let's see what we're interested in is right here just before the contact. And let's say we want to create a clip of just the contact and, and the incident itself. So we'll bring up once again the tool part here. Okay. We'll click on the scissors here to begin our clip. We'll play it to the point where we want to uh, end the clip. Let's say we want to end it just here, just as turn uh, car number 22 almost gets turned. If we stop it right there, and then if we click on the save button here, now we can name it. Name just this clip. Let's say we'll call it uh, car 22 underscore contact we'll click on save we save the replay and let's go back and review just that portion the way we do that then is we quit out of this replay we'll go say really quit we'll confirm it okay and then if we refresh the list here, reload the screen here, now you see the car 22 contact replay clip that we had that we had created. I'm going to click on play for that and we'll let that uh, load and once it's loaded I'll show you that we have the clip edited of down to just the contact and the incident that we chose. So here we have the replay of that clip loaded. Let's go back and look at driver number 22, car number 22. So I'll sort the list by car number. I'll come down to car number 22, double click there, and then I'll minimize the entries table there and here we have the clip that we edited from the overall replay and we'll go ahead and press play and we see the incident unfold and there's the end of our clip I'll back it up here and show you how the progress bar progresses as you're playing the clip. So this is how you can take a portion of the replay uh, and let's say you want to uh, file a protest and you want to take a clip of the replay to present to race administration this is how uh, how you would do that uh, you'd have that clip and later on I'll show you how to export that file uh, so that uh, you can then uh, upload it for admi at race administration to view we talked about activating telemetry using the alt L key combination so that you'd have data saved for review later on. Now I'm going to give a quick glimpse at the tools that Racecraft 1 instructors use to analyze that data and pick out ways and details of making you a faster driver. So uh, over here the program that we use is MoTeC. I'm going to go ahead and launch that. And what comes up is the MoTeC uh, menu here. We're going to open the iRacing pro uh, project and we're going to go grab a data log file. So we can see here uh, in a previous Junior Late Model Academy that we had earlier this year, we're looking at the data files <coughs> saved by uh, Racecraft One instructor Robbie Unser, along with a number of the uh, uh, drivers that participated in that in that s session. Let's come over here and look at, uh, we have some information here that talks about 
Let's come over here and look at the table of information for the different data files that we have uh, for Racecraft 1 instructor Robbie Unser. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose uh, uh, to compare Racecraft 1 instructor Robbie Unser's uh, 15.762 with uh, uh, Bryce Bazanson's 15.806 uh, uh, stint. So we'll open up both data files and it, uh, it shows here on the far left a uh, list of lap times for each driver in that stint. Here's the Racecraft 1 instructor Robbie Unser's uh, lap times 15.762. His fastest lap in that stint highlighted in orange with a red dot next to it. And Bryce Bazanson, his fastest lap, lap 6, highlighted 15.806. So uh, we're going to switch it around so that we're looking at Bryce, uh, I'm sorry, We'll keep it here at, at Robbie Unser's uh, Robbie Unser's lap, and on on this chart we have a graph of speed um, speed versus track position. We have throttle position, we have brake pedal position, and steering wheel angle, and we have this vertical cursor so that we can advance to any point uh, in the chart which corresponds to any loca uh, location on the track. And so here we see that we're right in the middle of uh, exiting turn two. I'm sorry, entering turn two here, um, as identified by the red dot on the track diagram. So we'll set it right back to that spot here, just where Robbie is beginning to pick up the throttle. You can see from the throttle trace where he's opening up the throttle, smooth progression to full throttle there. And uh, correspondingly on the top graph, you can see his speed will begin to increase from a low of 64.1 miles per hour, and it starts to increase as he's exiting turn two. <clears throat> If we want to examine what uh, what Bryce was doing at that same moment, we can come over here and click on that the square there, and now we have Bryce's traces, all of his traces shown in white for comparison. So you can see that Bryce carried a little bit less speed uh, into turn into turn one. All right, but any he's able to uh, pick up the throttle sooner all right so that at this point um, he's accelerating a bit sooner than Robbie however from a slower speed and right about there is where uh, their speeds are matched 64.8 miles per hour versus 63.8 and Bryce gets a slightly stronger exit you might want to know what effect this has as far as uh, where one car is ahead of the other car at that particular point on the track. The way we do that is we come up here to variance, we click on that, and now that shows a variance of the driver start out even at the beginning of the of that lap. You can see they stay pretty much even here. Bryce, because his speed trace drops down lower, he's losing He's, he's entering turn one more slowly, and so you can see that uh, uh, instructor Robbie Unser makes a gain so that by the time they get back to parity on speed, Robbie Unser is about one tenth of a second ahead of Bryce. Um, moving further, you can see just that 1.1 mile per hour difference of exit speed advantage that Bryce has. You can see that uh, he's closing the gap down to almost even here as they're entering turn three okay but once again racecraft one instructor Robbie Unser is rolling more speed on the entry uh, to turn three so that once again he opens up it opens up a gain there which he holds all the way to uh, the start finish line looking not only we can look at we can compare the throttle trace we can also compare the braking technique and you can see generally for turn one uh, race cuff one instructor Robbie Unser breaks earlier than and a little bit more okay right here breaks a little bit more than 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 Bryce earlier and and more but he's able to come off the brake sooner and roll more speed into the turn we can also compare the steering angle Robbie's uh, Robbie carries a bit more and steadier increase of steering angle into the turn, uh, which is what allows him uh, helps him to roll more speed into that turn. Uh, correspondingly, we, we can look at braking technique for the entry into turn uh, into turn three. You see, uh, Racecraft One instructor Robbie and Bryce they both come off the throttle at about the same time. They're on the brake at about the same time, but here Robbie releases the brake. Okay, you see the red trace coming down. Robbie releases the brake, which allows him to roll more speed, okay, into turn into turn three, giving him that advantage uh, over over Bryce. 
So this is just a quick view of one of the tools, one of the very valuable tools that your Racecraft 1 instructors use uh, to help dig out those little nuggets of speed to make you, uh, those little nuggets of speed and wisdom to make you a faster driver. Okay, in this segment, we're going to talk about setting up TeamSpeak. So, for downloading TeamSpeak, uh, uh, if you go to TeamSpeak.com, you type in TeamSpeak, dot com, and you click here on Downloads. Or you can come down here, or you can come down here to the green green button and click on free download. And you can download TeamSpeak. You can download TeamSpeak for I'm going to accept the cookies here. You can download TeamSpeak for Windows, for Mac OS, for Linux. If you have an Android phone, you can TeamSpeak works on your phone, and for Apple iOS, it works on your Apple phone as well. So if you're on a PC, uh, here I'm running Windows 10 on this PC 64-bit, then you would click on download to download the, uh, uh, the software there, click on save. And once the download is complete down here, we'll go ahead and uh, show it in that folder. And here it is, and we double click on that to begin to, to launch the installer. It would ask it for the computer would ask us for permission to install. We click on yes, and it would start. It would begin its installation. So we go through the setup wizard to install TeamSpeak, uh, and once you have everything installed, then you'll find here. I'm going to cancel it here because we already have it installed. I'll confirm it. But once it's installed, then you'll uh, you find that you'll have a TeamSpeak icon on your desktop here. So. Uh, now that it's installed, I'm going to click on TeamSpeak Client to launch it. And a window comes up. And the first thing you want to do is you want to connect to a server. And a server that we want to connect to is the Racecraft 1 server. So we click on Connections, then click on Connect. And here in the server nickname, or address you would type racecraft1 uh, then you type in the server password and in something else that's important here you want to type your name so that uh, the other uh, the other uh, drivers on the server would know uh, who it is that is speaking when you press the uh, press your transmit key so once you have that, those three items uh, uh, typed in, you click on connect. Connected. And now you're connected to the server. So you can see uh, when you first enter the server, you would be in, in the main room there. Um, let's say you wanted to come down to the Junior Late Model eSports room. So the way to move, move down there is you simply double click on there. And it'll switch you down to that to that channel. Some of the rooms, some of the channels are are passworded. You can see each of the Racecraft One instructors has their own channel. So if you're working one-on-one -on -one with the Racecraft One instructor, let's say I was working with David Porcelli, then I would double click channel on his switched. I would double click on his channel, and that would bring me to his channel. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is your audio settings. Uh, in a previous uh, portion of this video, we talked about your uh, audio settings, your sound settings um, that your operating system has set for, for default. So here we have uh, Realtek HD Audio 2 for my sound output, and then for my input, we've got uh, the microphone Realtek High Definition as our default output and input devices. Next, we want to make sure that TeamSpeak also has those devices selected. So in this case, we uh, we click on Tools, come down to the bottom of that menu for Options, and once we've done that, what pops up is the Options menu with uh, the different selections here in the left margin. The first two things we want to look at are Playback and Capture with the speaker and the microphone icons, respectively. Let's click on Playback, 
and playback mode we can automatically use best mode that's fine playback device is the default device which we had set in if you recall in the Windows sound settings we have our default device set as HD audio Realtek HD audio to second input if we click on the drop down arrow here you see we have a menu of default devices much like we have uh, I'm, I'm sorry we have a menu of playback devices for TeenSpeak much like we have a menu of playback devices here in uh, uh, in our overall default sound set sound uh, output choices so default here if we wanted to hardwire to something different for TeenSpeak then we could we, we'd be able to select that as well so in this case I'll leave it at default um, here we can adjust our our volume adjustment we can make it higher uh, higher volume or lower your volume with this slider and for TeamSpeak's built-in announcements we can increase and decrease the volume there to test our system we can play test sound testing your playback sound system and if you hear that sound that means you have testing your playback sound system the desired uh, playback device selected uh, once you have those those choices made you click on apply and that would save your settings next we'll go over to the capture to choose which microphone we want to capture so we come over here to capture once again as before we have default device uh, the default device set which according to Windows would be the microphone uh, here you would also assign uh, your push to talk button uh, TeamSpeak has a number of ways uh, to activate the, the microphone by pushing to talk. Uh, you can also set it to continuous transmission if you want it to be on hot mic continuously. You can also set it to voice detect, voice activity detection, and you can choose adjust the threshold of volume to which your mic would automatically start transmitting once it senses your voice talking. In this case, uh, we'll, we'll set here to push to talk, and here uh, you want to assign your push to talk button. You click on uh, click on this bar right here, and in my case, uh, with just my keyboard, I'll press the number pad number one. If I wanted to test my system, test my microphone, I come down here, click on begin test, and then I then you press your transmit button, button talk, talk it to, to your, your microphone, microphone, and, and I, you can you hear, hear your own, own voice, voice as a validation that that your uh, that your settings are working properly. Once again, come down here, click on apply to save those settings, and you can click on OK to continue. Okay. Uh, next, we'll talk about some of the chat features. Uh, so here in the in the TeamSpeak window, you've got a small inner chat message chat bar here. One thing to note is you also have a tab system here. So whichever tab you have highlighted, that's where your chat message will go out to. So if you want to go out to the whole entire TeamSpeak server, you see the TeamSpeak server tab is is selected here, and you type your your chat message here. So I, I'm just going to type chat test. I type that, and then you see that tech test. I'm sorry, that chat message shows up in the in the uh, in the chat window. Let's say I wanted to chat only within David Porcelli's room and the drivers or uh, and, or, or persons in David Porcelli's uh, channel. I click on his tab here, and then I type a test chat message. And you see now that it shows, hey, at this time, Kelly Jones uh, chatted this message here. Okay? If you want to chat directly to someone else, then you would right-click on their name. All right? And uh, uh, right-click on their name, and you'd be able to, and the menu will pop up, which will allow you to choose to chat directly to that person in that chat room. When you're transmitting, the dot by your name will light up a brighter blue. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to press and hold the, my, my push to talk button. And as I do so, you see that the button lights up next to my name. And when I release it, it's released. And that lets, that, that's one way you can tell who is transmitting in TeamSpeak. TeamSpeak allows you to record uh, the audio from that session. And the way you would do that is you come over here to Tools click on start recording TeamSpeak will ask you then where you'd like to save that recording uh, the default location may be to uh, to download and then you would click it you would click it there so TeamSpeak 
allows you to record your audio session for review at a later time. We find this to be a useful feature uh, if you want to, a useful feature to review uh, the tips and, uh, and coaching inputs that uh, your RaceCuff 1 instructor uh, has for you. So the way to do that is you click on Tools, come down to Start Recording, and then it opens up a window. Uh, uh, your default location would be Downloads, your download folder, and now it gives you a, a it says TeenSpeak for the file name. It says TeenSpeak 3 recording with the date and timestamp. Here it's going to be nice and convenient to call it, say, Junior Late Model Esports Series. Uh, I'll do an underscore and say something like Bull Ring uh, Practice. And once you click on Save, then uh, you'll see it initiates recording and it gives a uh, an indicator there Kelly Jones is recording and uh, and it'll record the audio uh, that, that you're hearing in that session when you're ready to stop recording you can just click on tools come down to stop recording okay so that's an overview of TeamSpeak when you're uh, you can mute your microphone if you don't have a hands uh, uh, a mute switch on your headset you can mute your microphone, microphone by muted by clicking on the microphone with the X icon there. Uh, if you want to unmute your microphone, just click, microphone activated. click there a second time. If you want to mute the audio coming in, okay, you click on the X over the speaker icon. Sound muted. And it tells you that sound is muted. And if you want it ready to unmute the sound, simply click again. Sound resumed. If you want to let everyone know that you're away from the, you're, 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 uh, away from the microphone, you click on here to say, hey, I'm away. See you soon. Okay, and when you want to let everyone know that you're back, just come back here again. Welcome back. And you're back. Okay, we'll exit TeamSpeak, and that sums up how to use TeamSpeak. Next, I want to talk about the racer's mindset. Uh, Generally speaking, the more experience, uh, the more driving that you do um, as an iRacing driver, the more comfortable and relaxed that you'll be when you get on track. What we find uh, in the Junior Late Model uh, eSports series is that uh, the experienced drivers are much more relaxed so that when it comes time to the heat race and the feature race, uh, they're, they're relaxed, driving smoothly, and making fewer mistakes. So for you as a, you know, for for you as a driver uh, in this series, you're not limited to just the Thursday races and the Wednesday practice and the Monday uh, uh, instructional group test sessions. Um, there's plenty of racing that you can do online uh, pretty much around the clock by joining sessions that are already running. And I'll show you real, real quick where to find those. If you come over here uh, on your iRacing members homepage, if you click on uh, click on host at races and join a race then what you'll see pop up is a menu of all the hosted races that are running uh, hosted sessions that are running at at that time and if you see if you scroll down at any given time there's a large 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 choice of race events to choose from some of them may be passworded by the with the green padlock and some of them may be cars or tracks that you don't have uh, that you haven't yet you have not yet added to your your inventory but regardless, you can see that there are plenty, plenty of races to find and race uh, and, and join in, um, both under the uh, the hosted sessions, uh, perhaps under the leagues and the league sessions. You can check here under league sessions and see what's running there. Um, <clears throat> it would have to be a league that you're a member of. You can also check on uh, official races to see what official races are, are running that perhaps um, um, you, you could join in. Maybe even click clicking on the popular races. So, so there's an idea like for instance Charlotte Motor Speedway you could just jump in on there and, and I, I really encourage all of our drivers uh, don't be shy about joining any track, any car uh, in an online session because no matter what races car and track combination that you join, you're going to be improving your skills and getting used to uh, the simulation environment. So uh, don't be shy about joining um, races that are already going on. Uh, that's going to help you improve your racing skills, uh, 
uh, improve your seasoning so that you're more relaxed when you come on track and you're making fewer mistakes and driving more smoothly. So that concludes your Junior Late Model Esports Series informative video. I'm your host, Racecraft One Chief Instructor Kelly Jones. Uh, we went over iRacing content, how to quickly update it. Uh, we talked about the audio, video, and display settings, uh, your spotter settings, and how to join as a spotter. Uh, we talked about iRacing radio channels, how to create your own specific radio channel uh, corresponding to your car number, and selecting which channels to listen to and to transmit on. We talked about uh, accessing and reviewing detailed race results that has a tabulation of every race event participant's uh, lap times, including your own. We talked about iRacing replays, setting up uh, iRacing to record your replays, and allowing you to choose to uh, to save your replays. Uh, um, we talked about we talked about your iRacing. We talked about iRacing replays, how to save them, how to name them, review them, the replay controls, and also how to edit and create your own clips of replays. We talked about your telemet uh, telemetry data and introduced our in-depth data analysis tools that your Racecraft One instructors use. We talked about TeamSpeak setup, how to connect, how to set your audio playback and capture devices and we also talked about the racers mindset and uh, encouraged you to race continue racing online not just in the junior late model esports series but in also also in other events that you can join uh, to get that seasoning so that when you are racing on the Thursday you're more relaxed and calm and making fewer mistakes all right thank you very much